like a priceless jewel buried in dark layers of soil and stone, Earth radiates her brilliant beauty into the caverns of space and time. We ask you, as seekers of the great stories, to proclaim an allegiance to Earth. Pledge the transformation of yourselves, which is the journey through light and dark, and honor Earth's momentous role in setting you free. Your task at this point in time is to activate the living library of Earth, to restore Earth and the human version of life to the forefront of creation. This is the journey you are on. We ask each of you to open your mind and heart, for within your body and Earth herself lie the answers to the great mysteries you seek. Although we appear to exist from without as a collective of Pleiadian energies calling to you from the future, we also exist within you. We are your ancestors existing within you as well as without. We are you on the golden spirals of time, cycling the epics of existence, calling to you yourselves to reconsider all you thought holy. We ask you to reevaluate the purpose of your life, to redefine the forces that rule you, to resurrect the codes of consciousness stored in your being. It is time for you to reclaim your knowledge as a creator through thought, to recall the purpose of the living library of Earth, to restore beauty through value of life, and to remember who you are. Journey with us now through the mysteries of your world. Picture yourself on an excursion through the image of twelve and lay the concept of twelve out in your mind. Imagine yourself experiencing the numerical symbols of 1 through 12, as in the 12 months of a calendar, the 12 movements through the signs of the zodiac, or the 12 hours around the clock. And then add to these symbols your own personal avenue of 12. Imagine you have 12 strands of DNA, and that these activate and connect to your 12 chakras, which are energy doorways through which you access your spiritual heritage. Herein lies a key. Your challenge is to know yourself through your imagination, accessing your inner networks and bulletin boards of reality, which are invisible to your naked eye. We are here for the game, the codes, and the master numbers. Our ancestors created events that presently stifle our development on the Pleiades. And as Pleiadians, we are seeking to discover the solutions to this grand dilemma, a predicament that you share with us. Our ancestors came from a universe that had completed itself and understood universally that it was Prime Creator as the journey of Prime Creator in time. They came from a universe that had discovered its essence, creativity. By discovering that essence, they found out that they were creators. They came into the Pleiades because that star system would someday be able to help you at a most challenging time, a time when you would be ready to reconnect with Prime Creator. Our ancestors are also your ancestors. They gave their DNA to the original planners, and this DNA became part of the DNA of the human species. The plan was to create an intergalactic exchange center of information within your planet Earth. It was an extraordinary plan involving a beautiful place, for Earth is located on the fringe of one galactic system and is easily reached from other galaxies. It is our intention to assist you in coming to a greater understanding of the Pleiadian experiments that have been influencing Earth. During times of chaos and confusion, times when the human species was suppressed, various factions from our home system came to different locations around your planet and made very subtle openings. They worked with small clusters of consciousness to leave a glimmer of energy upon your planet for many in the cosmos knew your planet was headed towards tremendous calamity and great suppression. Earth is in dire straits at this time, there is no doubt about it. Yet great opportunity lies within this state of confusion. 
We applaud your intentions and honor each of you for choosing yourself to go into the unknown. We honor you for being willing to look at the portions of yourself, female and male, that for all practical purposes you have not understood at all. It is time for each of you to be noticed in your own way, to magnify energies as they pass through you, and to make these energies available to multitudes of others as you casually pull light rays into your body and onto Earth. There are many families of consciousness that cluster together based upon evolution, intent, and a particular plan. The family of light to which you belong comes from such a lineage of consciousness. The family of light is a collection of entities coded to bring information to this planet. The coding is inside each individual. Once you are able to question and see beyond the current interpretation of reality, you are guided to create thought forms to fire the codings in others. Members of the family of light are able to integrate and survive reality shifts without destroying the bodies or life forces they occupy. As a member of the family of light, the ability to change reality exists innately inside you. You must create the belief system whereby you can do this because your mind is structured to evolve and form your experience based on what you command, no matter what paradigm platform you spring from. The family of light acts as a stabilizing factor for dimensional shifts, and its members serve as carriers of a frequency being used to awaken many. Members of the family of light have pushed themselves past the laws of third dimensional reality through to another dimension, so to speak, by uncovering the coding inside themselves. Many of you may have the feeling that you have done this before. You have. You lost your memory of this process because you came here to operate under the same laws as everyone else. When you incarnated into the earth plane, you received certain matched and paired recessive genes holding light codes that gave you the highest opportunity to develop psychic and intuitive abilities. In addition, these genes carried some memory that separated you from others, even though you could not name it. With these powers and talents, it has been your task to build on your life and allow the momentum to lead you into something different than most humans. As an extensive mutation occurs on the inside of humans, also stimulated from the outside by those who are assisting you in this genetic upliftment, you must act and integrate what is awakening within you. It's time for you to make a commitment to create joy, creativity, and love for yourself. Only then will you benefit others, for if you do not evolve yourself, you do not serve others. Humans are considered by some in this universe to be priceless, though in actuality you yourselves have no idea of the value stored in the human body. Your human body is the most valuable thing you will ever own and encounter. You are priceless. Your language is encoded and sounds create reflected images that stimulate and structure consciousness. Spoken words carry different vibrations than written words. We like to play with both forms of language. When we speak, our intonation has its own signature to it and we use subtle variances with emphasis on particular sounds. When you come into our vibration, you are getting many, many instructions triggering layers and layers of knowledge. There are the words you hear that you think you understand, and there is the space that occurs between all the words, which is another teaching in and of itself. And then there are the sounds we make that echo in your cells, that tell you a Pleiadian story. The inner and the outer workings are coming together to speed up your evolution. We have suggested that approximately half a million years ago, tumultuous events took place in this area of existence that affect your present day Earth. To a large degree, Earth lost her sovereignty and another force of rulership came in and claimed ownership to this prime hunk of real estate that you call home. 
These recently appointed godlike administrators have not always been the kindest and the most benevolent sorts. Earth was established billions of years ago for a purpose. She was to be an intergalactic exchange center of information, part of a vast library system where data from many, many galaxies was stored, a living library to be precise. The original planners of Earth were members of the Family of Light, beings who worked for and were associated with an aspect of consciousness called light. Light is information. Members of the Family of Light created the information center they had conceived. They designed a place where galaxies would contribute their information and would be able to participate and share their specific knowledge. The project of the Living Library on Earth was eventually fought over. Skirmishes took place and Earth became a place of conflict and duality. When these skirmishes occurred, a certain group of entities fought in space and won the territory of Earth. These new owners wanted the native Earth species to remain unevolved and uninformed so that the species would be easier to control. The original species of human creation experienced great destruction and its DNA was scattered. What the gods now realize is that we are in a dilemma in the Pleiades. There is a tyranny that was let loose on Earth and that tyranny has returned to us. Did you know that we made the tyranny? That we stripped you of your heritage of a fully functioning 12-stranded DNA? Do not be naive about Pleiadians, including us. Why do you think we are doing this healing work on your planet? Consider that perhaps we need you for our next phase of development. If we wish to grow, we must heal a past that we have been connected to. These last few years, you have been impulsed into diving more deeply into personal exploration, the meaning of identity, and connecting with your cosmic overview of life. Perhaps at first it seemed as if you were reaching far beyond what the parameters of civilization supported. As you met in quiet clusters everywhere, letting out your deepest yearnings and knowings and secrets that you had your whole life, you began to realize that perhaps you were not so far outside the parameters of civilization. Perhaps civilization was moving as you extended the boundaries. For the last half million years, various civilizations on Earth have been seeded from different star systems that were part of the original library program. Each appeared at a different time period, penetrating a controlled force field that isolated Earth and kept it inaccessible as a library. These civilizations would flourish for 500 years, 5,000 years, 10,000 years. Then the forces that own the planet would somehow shoo them away or destroy them. These civilizations could not establish ownership here, so they left clues or steps to the ladder as part of the master plan. Egyptians, Incas, Balinese, Greeks, Tibetans, Sumerians, Native Americans, Maya, Aboriginals, and many, many other indigenous peoples have contributed keys of understanding, all pointing to the heavens. If present-day humans could read the steps and clues left by these cultures, they could once again liberate and own Earth. Over time, an idealized form of civilization was transduced here on Earth to meet the greatest needs of the people. The greatest teaching brought to the planet was the ideal that all humans are created in equality and that life is to be honored in all forms. Expand your concept of existence and imagine this. For an occupation, game masters orchestrate realities and then insert these realities as life forms onto different planets. Game masters are brilliant. Not only do they conceive of the game and create the entire blueprint for the civilization to flourish in, down to the finest artisans and beggars, they seed themselves into the civilization as well. They know their civilization is complete when their own identities merge with the civilization so that they are in the civilization and creating it at the same time. We, as Pleiadians, are a game master experiment. 
The game masters are formless, and yet they can overlay themselves and infuse themselves into many different shapes. When game masters create a particular blueprint for a civilization, it has many versions of itself and is expressed on many worlds and in many realities. Part of the game master's task is to juggle all of these realities at once and to learn from every single version of that blueprint. The blueprint is not simply anchored into one realm, it is anchored into many realms. We want to push your boundaries of identity. We want to confound what you believe reality is because then you will be able to feel information from your higher self penetrate. We are here to help you dismantle the blueprint that you have been living within and to give you suggestions of very general laws around which you can build new structures. The codes and master numbers we seek are geometric formulas and combinations of intelligence stored within the human. The human, of course, is an integral part of the design for the living library. Each creation in the living library has its purpose and has a great amount of data stored in it. Inside the human body are formulas to replicate other forms of intelligence throughout your universe. Feel that out. Inside the evolved 12-stranded human are formulas to create life for other forms of intelligence in this universe. You are a transducer of energy. Just as we transduce energies from one system of reality into yours, and our teachers and others transduce to us, you must take what you know and very gently transduce it, playfully, without fear, for Earth's inhabitants. Others will see that you are stable, grounded, and loving, and that you work in the name of peace. Stay clear on that. Always adhere to the concept of peace as you reach for something currently unknown and make friends with energies whose looks could frighten others. You are doing very, very powerful work. It is our intention that those of you who know us and are familiar with our energies have a lighter step on the planet and are able to live the keys that we share with you. We give you keys straightforwardly and we trick you. We always trick you. It is wise that you learn to be a little suspicious of us. If you are not, you are our fool. Learn to have skepticism with all things and learn that sometimes we have great reason for what we do, even though perhaps it is not apparent to you at the time. All we do is create imagery from which you can evolve. Do not hang your hat on our story. Listen to the stories of everyone and then make your own synthesis. Figure it out for yourself. Every teacher on the earth plane at this time is offering you a clue. We offer you one clue. We simply have our own snazzy way of doing it. We have our own personality and our own agenda, and we know how to stimulate you to get you to move and be uplifted. We know how to set you free, and that is what we are after. It is our intention to return the value of human existence to the forefront of creation. We work with very ancient beings called the Keepers of Time who steer your universe. The Keepers of Time are the original instigators, the innovators of the living libraries. They are creations of the Game Masters. You must be, and we use your human terms here, very highly evolved in order to make contact with the Keepers of Time. Like the yogis and shamans of your world, the keepers of time possess ambiguous personalities. They are enigmas. Although they are known and respected, none know where they dwell, how to contact them, or what they look like. It is our fortune to be able to work with the keepers of time. They are our teachers, as we are one set of your teachers. The keepers of time have tricked us into discovering the living libraries. They have tricked us as well into figuring out how to activate these libraries because the keepers of time do not want to lose their universe. The keepers of time do everything in their power not to lose this universe because if your universe destroys itself before it completes, it will not fulfill its purpose. 
they see that it is headed towards destruction and separation. A separation that they, in fact, support. A separation that the keepers of time are concerned with is the separation of existing life forms from their essence. It is through this method that reptilian and other energies are creating tyranny. There are civilizations in space that are dying because they do not have access to the living library in the same way masses of humans are dying because you do not understand and have access to your own bodies. You are integral keys. The courage and faith that you have in yourselves will determine the course of experience for all of existence. As Earth moves into a place of balance and synchronistic union, she will create a geometric lineup with 11 other libraries that make up this library system. When this alignment takes place, the 12 libraries will create their own configuration of light that will reshape your universe, signaling connection, a certain victory, so to speak, for all of creation. You are linked to the 11 other libraries and your task is to unite all 12, creating the spinning of the 12. Just as you are spinning 12 chakras to open and connect information inside yourselves, you are going to spin 12 libraries back into existence. The 12 strands of DNA and the 12 chakras have many parallel 12s that move with them. The story of 12 is quite profoundly expressed all over your planet. It is deeply embedded within the mass psyche of human consciousness and has been employed throughout time in your terms as a method to structure and convey information from one system to another. The story of 12 grounds the idea of meaningful existence into your world. The earliest use of the ancient teaching of 12 was the concept of the zodiac, a narrow belt 18 degrees wide, on either side of the ecliptic, which is the apparent circular path of the sun around Earth. The zodiac was divided into 12 signs with 12 houses, conveying knowledge about creation through the idea of interweaving and linking 12 significant parts. The zodiac was believed to be alive with memory and it played an integral part in Sumerian, Hindu, Chinese, Egyptian, Chaldean, Greek, and Roman civilizations. Your 12 chakras are collections or pockets of energy where events can emerge. They hold memory and identity, and each corresponds to a strand of DNA. The first chakra stores your core identity. It deals with who you are and how you survive. It opens you to journey into yourself and the foundation of your core beliefs. The second chakra relates to creativity and sexuality. It opens the records of your beliefs and experiences in these areas. These first two chakras correspond with your traditional knowledge of two strands of DNA. The issues affiliated with identity, survival, sexuality, and creativity have challenged you for millennia. The third chakra relates to your solar plexus, your gut, so to speak. When open, it assists you to feel and intuit your way through life. In women, because of menstrual bleeding and childbirth, this area is often more active and regarded with great respect. Your will, power, and feelings lie here. The fourth chakra aligns with your heart, which when open, connects you to all of life. Compassion flows from the center, allowing you to understand the why and wherefore of what you perceive. The flow of compassion takes you beyond judgment, which acts as a trap to separate you. The fifth chakra is found in your throat, opening the great gift of vocal expression through which you speak your truth. The sixth chakra activates your third eye, stimulating your ability to see beyond the confines of 3D. The seventh chakra is at the crown of your head. When open, it connects and circulates spiritual energy to your cranial area. Once stimulated, the pineal and pituitary glands, as well as the hypothalamus, play active roles in linking you up. The eighth chakra is in close proximity to your physical body, anywhere from a few inches to a few feet above your head. It relates to the invisible realms outside your body, the ninth chakra is outside the Earth's atmosphere, 
perhaps as far away as your moon, connecting you as a steward and watcher of Earth. The tenth chakra reaches into your solar system, offering you access to all that is there. The eleventh is a galactic chakra that offers information about your local stellar influences. The twelfth chakra reaches outside your galaxy and gives you access to what is in the rest of the universe as you picture it. In general, you do not have access to information outside of your universe at this time because your body is not evolved enough to handle it. One day, you may evolve there. However, at this time, you have agreed to take on conscious evolution here on Earth to become a radio station broadcasting a tone or frequency that everyone else can handle. The Living Library is not simply a historical record. It is an entire library of knowledge from which anything can be created. There are formulas and blueprints stored in the life forms on Earth for all kinds of realities to be developed. Other libraries located in various sectors of the universe store their knowledge in light forms or collections of molecules that you would not even recognize. For each of the twelve centers, the Creator Gods designed a unique storage method for the knowledge. The intent is to protect the integrity of the libraries, each alive in its own way. Ideally, each of these twelve libraries creates an electromagnetic alliance which houses a stupendous shift in realization. The twelve together create the opportunity for a brand new harmonic for all of existence as you perceive it. Once this energetic geometric relationship is set into motion, the living libraries are designed to send forms of wave particles through space creating a new method for your universe to access itself. When these universal highways are connected as grid lines, information and energy will suddenly open a system of existence that was never there before. In your reality, you are constructing information superhighways that broadcast what is occurring on Earth, sending it out as an energy shift everywhere. Eventually, you will realize this shift in your body as it truly becomes the superhighway to life. Many members of the family of light will become guides to those who will match you frequency for frequency and love for love. You will bring about a merging through love that will create a new ownership and direction of this place that you call Earth. Remember that Prime Creator is in all things. So part of the true purpose of the Living Library of Earth is to blend and merge consciousness so that you may experience and access the magnificent knowledge that is stored here. The key here is to love and value yourself and Earth. There are a number of corners on your planet where small clusters of civilizations hold part of the Living Library open by imbuing love into themselves and onto Earth. Earth then returns love to them, making life creative and sustaining. When the living library is activated and feeds information, cooperation, and love back into human stewards, things will become less of a struggle. As a matter of fact, when the living library is completely activated, you will be able to manifest, construct, and find out anything you want. The human nervous system and DNA structure are not evolved enough at this time to hold the exchange of information and frequency that would take place if the living library were to be completely activated. It would involve too drastic a change from how you are used to perceiving nature. When the living library is in full bloom, intelligence will speak from all parts of existence, and we mean speak. You will spend an hour communicating with one particular flower. During this time, you will be entranced by the knowledge you will discover in walking three feet. There will be a gradual adjustment within all living life forms so that each evolves and opens simultaneously, creating a matching and a meeting of vibration and consciousness. Remember, everything is alive. Animals are brilliant and are much smarter than humans. Many are now moving to this world of light, which is why there are so many so-called extinctions taking place. Many of these animals are very in tune 
with the quality of life. They know that the quality of life they desire cannot be found anymore in your global sphere, and therefore they are departing. The animals were given to you as companions upon this planet. It has been up to you whether you eat them or not. The animals do not object to being eaten. If that adds to the quality of your life, and to the quality of their lives. Animals were designed and created to be your companions, to occupy the space, to teach, show, and share the way with you. The animals are a biogenetic creation based upon genes that were gathered from many different solar systems and planets. Their creation allows representatives from those systems to have a genetic link with Earth and therefore the ability to peer into and broadcast into this world. This facet of creation has never really been understood. Each species serves a purpose for you. Cockroaches that are overrunning your life may have to do with issues that you are not facing that are attempting to come to the surface. They are quite a hardy species and have survived many a shift of energy, learning to transmute toxins over and over again. They are here to remind you to look at that which is not necessarily dressed in its own finery, that which is inside yourself that needs to come out. Plants grown in a toxic-free, loving environment, nurtured and spoken to, send out a response to that treatment. The plants and trees outside the house want the same thing. So do the plants in the field next door. They want the same love, and they bend and move in the direction of love being expressed. There are plants that, when ingested, connect you to other forms of self and other forms of consciousness. The whole concept of altering your consciousness through plants has been given an unfavorable name in your Western world, associated with what you call drugs. In many sacred ceremonies and rituals, it is understood that certain parts of the plants of the living library are ingested so that you may further understand the living library. So, if you would, open your mind to the idea that Earth grows things that allow you to understand her in greater detail. Many of the substances that your Western world could benefit from exist within the plant kingdom. Sometimes antennae of beetles and bark or roots from trees hold keys used to balance, heal, and bring the human body into a state of higher consciousness. All things are here for a purpose, and when they are explored by humans, they give back and gift humans. Love is a frequency, and light is a frequency. They both exist as electromagnetic broadcastings of energy. The whole planet is a living library that can be activated by adjusting the human genetic structure. This is so because you as humans are the keys to the living library, and emotions are what allow you to read the information. Those who own your planet and would claim to be the gods in charge here are learning about love. Throughout historical time periods, the love frequency was held by different civilizations. For periods of time, Native Americans held a love frequency and the living library was open to certain degrees throughout numerous Native and Indigenous cultures. When their time of stewardship was complete, the frequency was transferred to other places. There have been many experiments from the Pleiadian system sent here to imbue the love frequency onto the planet and to keep it glimmering. On the Pleiades, there is a huge difference that is being made through all of this work that you do. We want you to comprehend that. This is an exchange, not a one-sided event. It is open-ended. The changes that are evident in your lives have corresponding effects elsewhere as a result of your clear intent and investment of energy. It is our intention and deepest desire that you live to see and feel these effects to know your multidimensional selves as spanning the worlds of both Earth and the Pleiades. We are the intermediaries, those who open the gates, make introductions and show the way. The gigantic force of intelligence awaits, stating, we want to meet the humans, we want to work with them, 
We want to be involved with this project. And we have said, hold up. You can't flood into their lives because they are fragile. You must be patient until they get to the place where it will be easy for you to meet. We want to assist you in redreaming the living library, making it into a new place with a new form of vitality. There are a few places where the living library is already activated. It is not just that the land itself is alive. It is necessary that human consciousness translate and work with the aliveness. That is what makes the living library, because it is through you that the living library is accessed. A living library without humans is incomplete. You are the essential component within the living library. We would like each of you, as you walk on earth, to speak to the blades of grass, the grains of sand, the petals of flowers, the butterflies, the insects, the ants, the birds, the bees, the ferns, the leaves, the drops of water, the dew, and to state your presence. State, I am here. It is my intention for you to release to me what knowledge has been stored within you as a living form. I am now here to receive it, to translate it, to understand it, and then to transduce it out to the rest of the planet. I am desiring to activate the living library of this planet. We would like that to be your living meditation and intention. Allow the land, the living library that is alive with the love frequency, to move into your body. Earth is alive and holds the knowledge you seek, and your consciousness affects what Earth reveals. All people who penetrate and discover the realms of the unknown and the domains of the mystics have unique experiences and interpretations of reality. Humankind is coded, and as you evolve, you follow a pattern. Your blueprint leads you into a concealed library of knowledge within you. The gods who formed Earth planted devices called chronometers that measure the evolution of human consciousness. When enough people awaken and trigger the chronometers, new data is opened on the planet. The mass consciousness is suddenly opened because enough people on the planet are able to follow their blueprints and respond. When you visit ancient sacred sites that you call power places, you experience electromagnetic formulas for higher consciousness. You often pick up what you left there thousands of years ago for you to reclaim. By journeying to these places, your body is exposed to these energies and accesses the blueprint along which you can evolve. The ancients built temples and megalithic structures in particular places to utilize the accumulation of energy in vortices. Each of these sites had a specialty. The great stone circle of Avebury in England was used as a dimensional doorway for various star systems, particularly Sirius, the Pleiades, and Arcturus. The stones were placed in a specific configuration that used light as a key to draw these stellar energies to Earth. Thus, an exchange of information was possible through a human-Earth stellar link-up. Such sites offered the energy of fertility, and couples would journey to make love at the sites in order to conceive, creating lives energized and characterized by the vortices. Other locations were designed as broadcasting stations, as calendars, or as oracles to read the future and expand reality. When you enter sacred sites and intentionally imagine your chakras as doorways of energy, opening to your personal memories, the sites become activated. Imagination is the most powerful force available to humankind. The ancients had the ability to feel the abundance of energy in these locales. They tapped into and used these enhanced places where lines of energy joined forces and there was a merging and meeting of dimensions and other worlds. If you never get to go to a sacred site and you spend time only in your backyard, you are not going to miss out. 
the intent to open your memory banks and to activate collective memory, plus your exposure to the frequency of materials and artifacts from others who have been to these places are all you need to experience your own awakening of the energies. Since the early 1980s, crop circles have become conspicuously abundant in and around the Wilshire and Salisbury Plain areas of Great Britain, where numerous stone, megalithic structures remain to this day. Mysterious markings appear as if by magic in the grain fields throughout the English countryside. They are synchronistically aligned to the sacred sites of Stonehenge, Avebury, and Silbury Hill, all widely recognized as places of celestial attunement. Part of the purpose of the glyphs is to pave the way for the mass consciousness to grasp what is inconceivable at the present time. You are not alone. The complexities of the markings will become more pronounced as the glyphs accelerate your awareness of other life forms. Ancient prophecies speak of signs upon earth and signs in the sky. There is a plan within a plan within a plan. There are friends in the sky and beyond, orchestrating layers of influence over and above what you can conceive of now. There are combinations of forces within the crop circles, and you will see them as light geometry dancing around in the air. The glyphs create shifts that will bring data to you. Then your challenge is to comprehend this new knowledge and to have your feet on the ground and your head at the top of the universe all at the same time. Can you hold that imagery? You are vast and you are capable of connecting with the deepest cosmos and grounding it into the earth. Geometry and mathematics coupled with planetary and star knowledge are the basis for the construction of dimensional doorways. Nosos on the island of Crete, Stonehenge, the Great Pyramid, the Acropolis, Delphi, Machu Picchu, Tiwanaku, and many others serve as doorways to other dimensions. These structures, built through the use of sacred geometry, totally confound present-day science. There is a mental distortion that prevents geometric structures from anchoring themselves more permanently on this plane of existence. Because your human capabilities are incomplete as linked through your DNA, you cannot mentally assist a structure in maintaining itself into being. All influences, both inner and outer, must be factored in. The elements of earth, air, fire, and water are as crucial to consider as the element of human thought. Geometry conveys its own teaching as it manifests into physical form. Shape and size radiate the essence of sacred geometry, creating knowledge transmitted from dimension to dimension. Perhaps you do not realize that you yourselves have different physical shapes. For example, dolphins are another version of humans. Dolphins exist not only in water, but on land and in the air. They exist in many dimensions at once. A joyous nature is one of their most outstanding characteristics. It arises from a very highly evolved consciousness that knows it is never destroyed. A consciousness that has a deep bonding with its human counterpart who has forgotten and believes that it is destroyed. Dolphins and whales are members of the family of light, and for eons they have carried frequencies from some of your ancient civilizations. The dolphins of your Atlantean culture were coded before the demise of that civilization and were given much information to retain and pass on genetically and telepathically. They are presently transmitting that information to the human species. Earth stores many remnants of civilizations some of which spring from a point you would call the future. Your now can be seeded and influenced from many directions. Some of the so-called foundation stones of your current world beliefs are not remnants from the past. Distortions can be constructed in the future to plant in the now and appear as if they came from a point a long time ago. 
planted artifacts can purposely divert you from understanding the identities of invisible rulers that you perhaps call gods. If you can reach the point of understanding that the material realm is a symbolic representation and not get lost in hoarding, then there are many magnificent artifacts that can reappear. Your planet has numerous changes to go through over the next 20 years, and these ancient artifacts, laden with coded knowledge, will begin to reemerge. At the end of these times, in December 2012, as decreed by the Mayan calendar, there will be an anchoring of many dimensions. This will reveal the mystery behind existence, and it will be as if Earth suddenly blossoms overnight, even after some portions are seemingly destroyed. Tibetans understand many of Earth's cosmic keys. There is a portal in Tibet, a huge energetic opening. Portals are composed of quarters of time. The Tibetans, basically up until the 1950s, diligently maintained an energy doorway. Over hundreds of years, they have acted as guardians and emissaries for those who ventured through. The Tibetans have been working with extraterrestrials for eons. At one time, the region known as the Himalayas was at sea level. Under the mountains of Tibet, there are huge veins of gold and caves filled with crystals. There are artifacts stored there that indicate the ancientness of civilization. Included are many physical bodies that have been preserved. The Tibetans had a predilection for preservation just as the Egyptians did, only they had a different method involving gold. The Egyptians employed the mummification process, which involved memory from Atlantean times when people were rejuvenated and restored if their DNA was intact. Gold is part of what allows dimensional doorways to be opened. It anchors portals and brings about transmutation and is reserved for more than costumes, crowns, masks, and jewelry. It holds the highest vibration and is a premier conductor of electrical current. When gold is stored or created in great abundance, light portals can be opened and access to other dimensions unfolds. Understanding the communication process, both inner and outer, is a key to a peaceful earth. The inner you communicates continuously with a you that can be called your higher self or your inner teacher. It is a version of you invisible to your current perceptions that nonetheless has a powerful influence. As your psychic awareness increases, it becomes easier to know what someone else is about because it is energized by their being. You are able to read energy as your communication skills expand to consider new ways in which to translate meaning. A form of communication that can free you from the traditional interpretations is toning, the process of allowing sound to move through you, playing you like an instrument. Toning is a key to releasing stored knowledge. It unlocks a doorway and allows information to flood into your body. In this age of information, you are steered away from the natural sources of gathering knowledge for yourself. You have been sold the idea that television is a great source of information. You damage your own consciousness and the potential that your consciousness has when you give over your time to television. You suppress your imagination and do not use one of the greatest gifts you possess. It will be understood centuries from now how in the later half of the 20th century people were induced into dazed states and made to behave, to be asleep, and to be sick through television. Reconsider what you've learned about life and choose to listen to nature's broadcast, the voice of Earth, as she speaks. You are on assignment throughout all of your days. It is what you have agreed to do as part of your essence. When you are on the journey to know yourself, there are many paradigms from which you will break free. These paradigms are like boundaries and fences that you have not realized surrounded you. Ask for a grand enhancement of your identity and learn what it is to feel expanded, 
to experience yourself on many levels of perception. Most of all, learn what it is to trust the process. In your wildest dreaming, you cannot currently imagine where Earth is headed. The masses are entranced by a world of facts, encyclopedias, television, and newspapers, and the multidimensional anomalies have not yet penetrated your plane of existence too deeply. When they do, things beyond what you can conceive will begin to occur. As a journeying entity, you were called an impulse to explore Earth as a place within the solar system that serves to stage life and is a home for ancestral codes. Earth is a birth house where life is created and experienced. Recollect for a moment the idea that the game masters are parents of civilizations by means of conceptualization. They create and hold thought forms and then proceed to distribute untold plans to draw meaningful life into their creation. They experience the web of existence as a force and field of unlimited awareness that is intelligent and responding. Perhaps you are aware of those who watch over your home and experience it as a place to visit and play with reality. This is your recognition of yourself. You are becoming aware of yourself as a game master, experiencing Earth as a native within your own creation. Recollect the concept of the game masters creating civilizations then becoming immersed within their own construct of reality only to awaken to this knowledge. Earth, in terms of time, is quite ancient, and there are stories concerning her that have long been buried and hidden away. Sumerian records hold numerous keys for expanding an understanding of your ancestral lineage. The records maintain that for eons, a cast of celestial characters with multiple agendas graced the stage of Earth. These ancient records recall a time hundreds of thousands of years ago when two ruling brothers, Anki and Anlil, were in charge of the Project Earth. These visitors, called the Anunnaki, came to Earth from the heavens and played God. They created what they wanted on Earth based on their own intentions. Their purpose was to experiment with life and create humans to dwell on Earth. These gods are your ancient parents having seeded a version of Earth's genetic line with their influence. Numerous anthropological discoveries offer clues to your past through old skeletal forms. The forms depict a human album of change throughout the last few million years. These archaeological discoveries portray what your scientists call stages of human development or evolution, assuming that human life was the same everywhere. In actuality, gods created various experiments employing the genetic material stored here in the library. A prime characteristic of this particular area of existence is the exploration of what is possible. Most crucial for you to consider is the concept of the gods as parents. Consider who they are as well as who you are in relationship to the stellar energies that are asking to be recognized. The Sumerian culture, considered by most experts to be the cradle of civilization, flourished about 6,000 years ago in an area called Mesopotamia, located between the ancient waters of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in modern-day Iraq and Kuwait. The civilization was rediscovered in the last century. The area where it thrived is a political hotspot in late 20th century Earth, where war and many disruptions of power and value of life persist. The Sumerian culture was directed by those who came from the stars, the stellar reptilian ancestors. They were establishing a civilization once again, creating one more experiment to look at what could be done with the biological forces of Earth. The reptilian race, or Lizzies, as we affectionately call them, are an integral part of their ancestral line. They are an awesome, ferocious, and gracious collection of consciousness, for they are many things combined into one. 
These reptilians are important for you to understand as aspects of existence that connect you to the deep taproot of your own heritage, your past. In order to grow further into understanding yourself as a blossoming entity on the wheel of life, unfolding into the story of 12, it is essential that you understand your home, your roots, and your genes. Understand that the reptilian energies are creator gods. They are master geneticists who assisted the original planners in designing the living library. They are an ancient race and are very advanced in creating sentient biological forms. They were some of the prime instigators in putting together the human species on this planet. They learned their craft from the ancient ones. As master geneticists, the Lizzies know their trade. They are highly skilled in genetic organization and manipulation. They far surpass many brilliant beings in their ability to genetically adjust life. So in the vastness of existence, the reptilian families are known to be creators and are responsible for organizing the genetic structure of life forms. Memories are buried in your cells and you are not quite sure what's there. Feel your body and imagine your spinal column, chakras, and 12 strands of DNA as a tree of life growing upward. At the bottom of the tree, there is a serpent, like a taproot, connecting you to Earth. Imagery will help you get in touch with your reptilian ancestry so you can have a neutral look without labeling anything. Visualize the serpent energy climbing your tree, rising up your body, electrifying you. As a member of the reptilian family, serpent images trigger cellular memories of the gods who made you, showing you that you sprang from the serpent and that the serpent brings you life. Sometimes the ancient reptiles that your myths call dragons hoarded crystals. Crystals are senders and receivers of information. Many of the highest civilizations were anchored by reptilian energies who had access to the human blueprint and carried this human blueprint from another system into this one. The reptiles did this by bringing a tremendous amount of crystalline energy and hoarding, collecting and storing it inside lairs or caves as underground bases of operation. Then they sent versions of themselves to the outside world as their representatives, very often in the form of snakes. It was the only way they could enter the outside world without being harmed. If they had come out in their dragon nature, the consciousness of the existing humans at the time could not have withstood the encounter. Many people would like to abandon Earth at this time, as if she is no longer a worthy place to live. Angry voices don't like the conditions of the cities or the water. As if the Earth herself created these conditions, we would say to you, what better place would you find? Your home is what you make of it. Many of you are very disturbed by the masses of people that continue to choose to kill and go to war. We remind you that those who believe in this experience will create it and seek it out. You can exist in a parallel reality simultaneously with this and not attract it to yourself. There is a great cleansing that is occurring and you cannot stop it. The energy of Earth is being sped up so that those energies with which you vibrate in the core of your being and those truths you discover from your ancestral line, you will manifest forward. It is a traumatic time because it seems as if the systems that represent family and civilization are falling apart. Those systems that do not work are indeed falling apart and you will be rattled to the core of your being to find something that will work and that values Earth. If you cannot take care of your home, then perhaps you do not deserve one. Earth is a priceless jewel, and you are considered by many to be the integral key to this gem. Yet in your own misguided sense of purpose, you have sought to exalt the self without honoring the stage from which you can explore life. Conflicts exist within the mass consciousness as to what the priority is today. 
many people will lose and or give up their homes in the next few years, bringing you closer together so that you may experience humanity as one big family. When you unite, perhaps through challenging situations, you also will understand those who have been outside your family. These other forms of life, who are waiting to be integrated as the dimensions open up, will reveal the immense creativity and variety of reality. Earth needs you in the same way you need the billions of bacteria that live inside your body, performing functions that operate without your conscious directive. One isolated microorganism could be quite toxic. However, together, they know what to do. They don't poison you. They eat everything so that you do not die. If they were not inside you, the food you eat would not pass through you. You tolerate these so-called toxic beings that live in you, and actually, you cannot live without them. In the same fashion, Earth cannot live without you and all of life. Imagine Earth restored to her regal beauty. Stately trees seem to brush the deep blue sky, and clouds billow to form majestic peaks. The songs of birds fill the air, creating symphony upon symphony, each one orchestrated for the moment. Learn to feel alive. Discover meaning to your life as you explore the aspect that is stored away as your subconscious self. Send your taproot like a serpent into Earth's records and call back to your mind a majestic Earth as a home for you, the rightful dweller in this place. Prime Creator is a female vibration. The source, as we know it, is a feminine vibration. The consorts of this feminine principle, the male vibration, in competition for the love of the goddess, began splintering off in a misuse of energy millions of years ago. You are one fragmented part of that misuse of energy. Two Pleiadian sons of a mediocre god took over Earth, had a battle between themselves, and created the present-day dilemma. In the larger picture, it was a minor family squabble. The Divine Mother Goddess fragmented and made herself into many forms to be the consort of numerous gods. They wanted to appease and love and be in this vibration of the Mother, because this is where all of the creative vital forces come from. Feel in the deepest core of your identity the nurturing, the gift, and the mystery of the Mother. There will be a return and an awakening to Mother Goddess energy. You will find in this decade that all of your religions are based on a false ideal. They are all based on a controlling, cold-hearted, patriarchal movement, when in actuality it is the Mother Goddess who is behind all things. We in the Pleiades have discovered the root cause of our misuse of energy. We have not honored the Mother. We have done things to gain the attention of the Mother, Yet we have not valued the mother's creation, the mother's gift. When you explore the goddess, you begin to value life. When you value life, you don't overpopulate earth, and you don't kill. What must come to the forefront of the world's paradigm is an understanding of what life is, what death is, and what all species are, and the fact that everything is interconnected, that everything is connected to the same source. We would like each of you to get to know the goddess. Make it your quest to call the goddess to yourself in some way. Invite the goddess to teach you about life. She will begin working with you in ways that are quite profound. Many of you have called us the Pleiadians into your life. We play with you, and you know our vibration, our humor, our tricks. Even we work with the goddess. The mother goddess represents the love principle. We have mentioned the frequency of light, light being information, and the frequency of love, enlisting creation. The deepest underside of Pleiadian information is its sensuality and sexuality, its creation through the love vibration with the goddess. Working with the goddess energy requires a deeper exploration of the feminine principle. The goddess is calling for an honoring of what she allows to be created through the core mystery of the blood. 
to the very gift from her own womb. The blood and its mysteries are key to understanding yourselves, your genetic line, and the living library itself. The blood is a living symbol demonstrating cyclic evidence of your connection to the ancestors and the codes of consciousness stored within all beings. Your blood is rich with stories. It is filled with patterns and designs of a geometric nature that reorganize themselves according to your state of consciousness and intent. In order to awaken to a new view of life, you must be willing to reconsider and make changes. Your thoughts are recorded by your blood. They are imprinted with a distinct font according to your feelings and then radiated outward for all worlds to read. You are the sum total of yourself in physical form because of your blood. Often, women have been in disdain of their menstrual blood rather than honoring it as the source of their power. The blood carries the genetic code and because the mother goddess is the source of all things, this is where the code comes from. It is where the story is hidden. Menstrual blood can be used to nurture plant life, to mark the earth, and to let earth know that the goddess lives again. Women, if you are still bleeding, become wise in honoring your body and your blood. Your blood is one of the highest sources of fertilization and territorial marking that you can call upon. Understanding the blood mysteries is key to connecting to the source of your power and deep inner knowledge. You can mark the land where you live with your menstrual blood. You might start out with the cardinal points, north, south, east, and west. But over time, you can continue to imprint earth like a painter laying strokes on a canvas. You can dilute the blood with water, thereby increasing the amount. You can bless it and use crystals to hold the vibration. This process is considered to be marking the goddess territory. It will draw plants and animals that have a new vitality and that feel that they are one with the goddess. If you want to have a fertile garden, the best garden in town, use your blood diluted with water. Your garden will flourish. You will find that your blood can accelerate the growth of food. It will accelerate many, many things. It is not a mistake that women bleed. It is one of the grandest gifts. It is the elixir of the gods. Aboriginal women save their menstrual blood in pouches and use it to heal wounds. There are many things that women can do with their blood. Some of you don't like the idea that you are women. When your bleeding occurs, you find it an unpleasant, uncomfortable, painful, inconvenient time and experience. Men often have no idea what goes on, so it is an awkward time for them as well. In the days ahead, contact the goddess, open your heart, and discover where the bleeding can take you and teach you. For within the bleeding process lie many of the keys to bringing the goddess back onto the planet. There is a need to return to the sharing of power through partnership. Menstrual blood is highly oxygenated, the purest of blood, and it carries decoded DNA. It is the oxygen that decodes those strands and allows the restructuring of the data. Your scientists are now playing with a third strand of DNA. They are learning how to build strands of DNA based on photon lights, fibers in the body that we call light encoded filaments. The energy of the goddess is moving rapidly ready to work with those of you who are willing to remember her call. Her instructions are to honor your bodies and earth and your sexuality because it is through this process that you are all created. We know that some of these ideas make you uncomfortable and that is why we bring them up. Embrace the fullness of your bodies and of what needs to be done and get on with it. Work together, play together. Women, wake up and read the owner's manual of your bodies and discover that you own something valuable. Men, you own something as valuable as well, and this something called the body has cycles, rhythms, and patterns. It can do miraculous things. The blood is more mysterious to the male vibration because all of a man's blood is inside of him. It is not something he can see 
and feel each month like a woman can. War is one of the distortions brought about by the patriarchy in an attempt to give males the power of blood. Yet this blood is not the same. It is brought about by violence, by destroying life, by maiming and killing, with emotions or feelings stifled and suppressed. There is only one appropriate way for a man to take into himself the power of blood, and that is for a woman to gift him with her blood to share her own elixir. There are many ways this can be done. For a man to eat fruits and vegetables grown with menstrual blood is one obvious way. Also, a man may be marked on the back of his neck or on the soles of his feet with menstrual blood. His body will absorb the knowledge contained within it. Having sex during menses in a bonded relationship is a very powerful way of sharing blood. This is a very ancient ritual, and we do not advise any random sexual exploits to share menses blood. It is a sacred and powerful act. Why do you think there has been such a taboo? Why were you steered away from the blood mysteries for eons? Perhaps because it would open doors of knowledge that the gods did not wish you to have. Blood contains the archives of personal planetary and celestial experience. When blood is experienced in a sexual union, you are flooded with waves of knowledge, much of it beyond your present ability to understand and integrate. It may take years for the profound knowledge decoded in your body through blood to unfold. The male counterpart of Mensa's blood, of course, is sperm. Sperm, like computer chips, carries the code of intelligence for the evolution of consciousness. This is presently being measured by the degree to which the male vibration can remember and embrace the goddess. It is the sperm that decides whether a child will be a male or a female. The egg remains the same. The sperm makes these decisions. Sperm is the mother's story encoded in the male vibration and contains the interpretation of how the male remembers that story. In women, Blood is the vibration of the color red. In men, sperm is the vibration of the color white. Mixed together, blood and sperm are another elixir. It has been the worst heresy to even think that men would touch women who were menstruating, let alone have sex with them, let alone mix semen with their blood, let alone taste it. Yet, far back in ancient times, when the goddess energy was understood, and when women were revered, this mixture was considered the drink of immortality for men. Men understood that when they drank menstrual blood or mixed their sperm with it, they became enlivened and invigorated. It was one of the keys to immortality. When a woman goes through menopause, she experiences a pause. If she is able to hold on to that pause, something transforms inside and she comes into a place of wisdom. Throughout most of recent history, when a woman stopped her menses, it was believed that she was to be feared because she could now hold the blood and keep all its power. Most women around the age of 40 and some women in their 30s began to decree their death by energizing the aging process. Women are steered away from their own natural cycles and through their thoughts, hates, and cursings of their own bodies, they throw their bodies off balance. There is a complete misunderstanding of menopause that is similar to the misunderstanding that bleeding is a curse. Everyone tends to adopt these misunderstandings. There is a great gift in menopause, and there is nothing that is lost at this time of life. It is a time of tremendous gain and flowering, the very opposite of what you have been told. Often, Men who have vasectomies fear their own sexual power and believe they have no control over their bodies. The symbolic representation of vasectomies states their sense of powerlessness, that their sperm and penises do not do what they want. The fear of sperm creates a fear of the body. Those who have vasectomies also speed up difficulties with their prostates for shutting off the flow of sperm creates difficulties in the body. We do not recommend vasectomy. We recommend that you learn how to use your bodies rather than condemning your body's functions and creating detours. 
Be open to a sense of wonder as you reconsider your sexual beliefs. To be alive is to know the goddess. Look for this force in yourself and in everything around you. Say, show me goddess who you are. I want to meet you. When most of you thought of Prime Creator as a male personification, you had no problem. Now, to switch to female, some of you can't conceive of it. Life comes from the female vibration. Eve did not come out of the rib of Adam. That tale served to empower the male vibration, which desperately needed to have some kind of identity during the fighting of the goddess culture. We are seeking a balance. If you look around, you are male and female, and all stories of your identity and creation thread the truth of both forces together for you. When you seek balance inside yourself with male and female, in the ideal, you will draw to yourself a partner who is balanced in the same way. Inner balance means that you are your own source and that your next step is to pull your source with another in order to feel and become a bigger source. Not that you necessarily need a mate. However, your natural process is to build something together, to put your keys together as male and female aspects. These aspects correspond to physiological aspects that convey you into the spiritual and emotional realms. The goddess and her compassion allows. Embracing the goddess energy within yourselves will bring all of you to a new understanding and valuing of life and a new and deeper love for all of creation. Embracing the goddess will open the living library to you and teach you the secrets held deep within the bosom of Mother Earth. For who is the Earth Mother if not the goddess herself? evolution that you are now going through involves the process of building and integrating a light body. Your light body must be tempered, exercised, and stretched gently bringing it into its own awareness. Clarity concerning who you intend to be in your reality is one of the prime keys in building your light body. Your light body knows that it creates through thought and links you to the fabric of creation. Through your light body, timelines open, accessing multi-layered dramas, and your challenges gather force as you face a seemingly uncharted and yet familiar territory. You are connected to all of existence, and your evolutionary leap is to make sense of this new awareness and to put it to use in your now. Matter is simply light that is trapped. As you build your light body, a reorganization of your molecular structure occurs, loosening your grip upon materialism in order that a spiritual understanding may guide your day-to-day -day life. It is only through spirit that you can gain any understanding of what is happening to your world. The building of your light body allows less trapped matter to combine as light and become you. This offers you freer expression and allows you to seek your source. You will literally see changes in your body. It will become more vital, more beautiful, stronger, and more capable of performing events. It will become the processor of multitudes of information. To prepare for this energy, sit quietly, close your eyes, picture your body filled with light, and imagine the light flashing and cleaning your cells. Then ask all parts of your body to work together in their idealized forms. If your body works together inside yourself, then it is much easier for you, as an individual, to work with others outside yourself. Those who are sick inside often don't work very well outside. Attend to the inner mechanisms of your body, visualizing what you want. Within your body lies a force of power called Kundalini, a serpent-like energy that dwells at the base of your spine. Acknowledging and calling this force forward facilitates the merging and bundling of your light body. This force also helps maintain your stability and groundedness with the increased electromagnetic shifts. Traditionally, Kundalini uncoils itself and electrifies your body at around 40 years of age. By this time, you are considered mature enough to house this kind of power. 
for most people, the power is so profound that they go downhill from there and begin to age rather than rejuvenate and put the great creative electrical force to use. As cosmic energy comes onto the earth plane, there are millions of you who are now increasing the opportunities to reinterpret what Kundalini can do. It is the force of your lives and you pulse with it. This energy may be utilized to heal, for when it builds up in your hands, you have the hands of a healer. Many of you would be very surprised if you peeked a few years into your own futures and saw the so-called unexpected, including what you will be able to do with the energy coming out of your hands. There are individuals now who are able to hold their hands together and make a piece of paper catch on fire. This energy in the hands is going to amplify in each of your lives. You may use it to purify food, heal, clean the oceans, and depollute the rivers and land. You will be able to transmute the toxic pollution that is everywhere around your planet. Your planet is going to survive its transmutation process as you recognize the power of imagination, which is tied very closely to memory. Imagination acts as a movie screen in your mind that holds images and creates blueprints of consciousness. Your body is filled with memories of different worlds as well as different time frames from the now you perceive. As Earth evolves, you will become capable of pulling up these concepts and blueprints and finding the teachings in their purpose as well as their significance to your now based on what you know. Bringing memories of other times and places into your current reality unifies the significance of your life. It creates a healing by helping you understand the purpose of self-inflicted wounds. One of the most important keys we can give you is this. Love yourself, honor the vehicle that you occupy, and act as if you are priceless. Act as if you lucked out and receive the best thing possible, your body. Honor Earth as well with love and respect, for it is here on Earth that you stage your fanciful dramas. Love yourself and Earth on your ride through the universe and your journey will be lighter. Sex in 3D can provide the energy through which you can emerge to higher consciousness. It can lead to an essential part of your multidimensional development. Sometimes it is difficult to hear about sex because you hold on to judgment of traumatic events that you are ashamed of or that you feel bad about surrounding your sexuality. Everyone has something stored away concerning the sexual parts of themselves. To a large degree, there has been a plan to influence you to feel shame about sexuality in your body. This has kept you from discovering your power, purpose, bliss, and freedom. As your body takes on and integrates new energy, memory will be awakened in you. Utilizing nature is one of the best ways to get in touch with remembering. Sitting out in nature, watching nature, being in idleness, being in the now, and letting the now expand into the ongoing, spontaneous, synchronistic moment, the ever-expanding now. Activating memory involves disengaging yourself from all the shoulds you have piled up for yourself. Are you busy running nowhere? Do you truly lead the most meaningful life that you can? Do you await the approval of others forever a shadow of the power of radiating your truth? Please do not hide from yourselves or from others. Live. Memory is like a pool or a mirror inside your body and it needs to be replenished and refreshed with the reflecting ability of water. Water is what enhances memory in the physical body. Kundalini fires the codes, activating the light-encoded filaments and bringing them into light. These tiny fibers are filled with information, and Kundalini moving through your body gives you the opportunity to own your own memories. Emotions are the sum total of your wealth as a human being. Emotions trigger the inner pharmacopoeia, your body's personal drugstore. In the drugstore of your body, you are the pharmacist. You write the prescription according to your emotional response 
a reaction to events. Your emotions create a corresponding chemical release inside your physical form. The endocrine system, which is responsible for the chemical responses to your emotional choices, will evolve. New chemicals will be produced inside your body that will help you change. Choosing a different way of receiving or translating reality will trigger inner doorways to open and produce substances that will take you into the higher realms. The plan of intention is for human beings, based on the increase of light, to evolve into multi-talented beings. Some people are operating on 6 to 8 percent of their brain capacity. Someone who is using more of their brain, in Einstein for example, is using at best 15 to 20 percent. Ask yourself these questions. What is the other 80 percent of my brain doing? Why is it dormant? What is not hooked up? The endocrine system will evolve as DNA evolves, producing chemical substances that are combinations of intelligent geometric shapes. These shapes will exist all over the body and will not be localized simply in the brain. Everything will happen simultaneously. As the strands of DNA begin to discover their identities and come alive, they will change the endocrine system. Your decision to be in the moment, to love yourself, and to work with love on the planet, with yourself, and all people, will completely change what happens inside you. This is a key to rejuvenation, most definitely. Be willing to experience yourself, your life, and your body as your own creations. Your thymus gland is pivotal in sending the signal to your body to hold the pattern of rejuvenation. Your thymus gland shrinks the older you get. It shrivels up. It is like the gatekeeper at the base of your neck that regulates what comes from above and what comes from below. Your upper glands, the pituitary and pineal, as cranial temples, are inactivated. They are basically dormant. Your thymus gland does not continuously remind your body of its idealized blueprint because it is not getting the messages to do so from the temples in your head. This is because your temples have been disconnected from the full strands of DNA. Your thymus gland will return to its own vitality when it receives the message that your body has done its preparation and that your consciousness is ready. If you think in terms of life expansion, some of you have barely begun your work. Others have training that is going to implode you into the next shift. Your work is a gift to the planet, a gift to civilization. Your hypothalamus can be thought of as the gatekeeper between your physical body and your outer chakras. Its time has not yet come. In your present stage of evolution, you cannot comprehend its function. Yes, it does regulate the body's temperature and flow of water, and water is the essence of your life. We always encourage you to be around water, to be in water, and to use water because water enhances the function of your hypothalamus gland. It keeps it lukewarm for when it needs to get heated up. The time will come to further explore the hypothalamus. With all the fuss about a health care system in your United States, we remind you that health is free. The true cost of health care is a few moments of your time to develop the right attitude about your body. You create your health or your disease, and you don't need anyone to tell you whether you are healthy. First of all, when you are in touch with your body, when you take a shower or wash, you can feel and know your level of well-being. You know if you are in a state of health or not. You may choose to worry and distrust your body. If you worry about your health, then you will create something. Your body follows the images you instigate. The more compassion you have for others, the quicker mass consciousness will change. We are asking all of you to play this heart game much more often than just when you have spare time. Make a commitment to have your heart open and see that it stays open and that you use the heart energy of the Mother Goddess. This will make all the difference. 
because it is not just your heart that is involved. It is the heart of the goddess. However, the goddess needs your heart to open to have her energy move through you. As energy increases on the planet, blocks in your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies are magnified. Unexpressed feelings and ideas create obstacles to the flow of energy whose purpose it is to connect you. You must help the process by being responsible for who you are. Wherever you have a prejudice or difficulty, I don't want to know that. I hate this about myself. I don't like that. You can trust that the magnifying glass will be put over it. You will squeal and squirm until you get it right. And if you don't, you will manifest the block in the form of a difficult challenge. Everything is intensifying in order to teach people about responsibility and maintaining a clarity of purpose and intent. Utilizing different modalities of body work in this day and age is key to your survival. Pursuing avenues of discovery through bodywork facilitates and quickens the recognition of your identity. There is a great humor in highly evolved energies, especially those who work with the love frequency. It can be recognized as a trademark. With energies you encounter, make certain there is an expansive sense of humor, for laughter is a key to freedom. There's plenty of room for joy in all of existence, and this is a concept you are seeking to grasp. We encourage you to operate out of your feeling center, your solar plexus or gut. You have the same capacity and activity inside your stomach lining as you do in your brain cells. Reconsider yourself. You can instantly see that you alter your experience when you believe in and find opportunity in every event you create. We remind you that opportunity is often disguised as loss. All life has chakra systems. They are energetic storehouses around and inside of life forms. The chakras connect the internal workings, the physiological third dimensional operations with the multidimensional etheric layered goings on. They bring energy from the non-physical realms into the physical if utilized properly. All forms of life have these energy portals as doorways and places where they can be refueled. What each form of life does with its refueling is within the blueprint or the DNA of the form of life itself. As your DNA is being reordered into a new expression of itself, the frequency or identity that you carry is speaking something on a non-physical level. Every place you go, you carry the mutating energy that announces itself. Your consciousness announces itself to all life forms. Maybe those who are next to you in a shopping mall or a restaurant are not quite aware on a conscious level of who you are. However, when you take a walk in the woods and fields or go into the oceans, you will see other life forms around you that are much more aware of who you are. They change their response, and their DNA changes because yours is changing. Through you, all of nature becomes more available as the living library. You, as human beings, are the library cards, the keys to the living library. All the information stored in Earth's library is accessible through you. You were designed to be merged with, influenced, and emerged through. You have come here to master the human version of the spiritual evolutionary process, to live with it, to merge with many different realities, and to allow realities to emerge through you. As humans, your job is to own and take care of the living library. In the past, those who wanted to experience the living library would, with permission, look out of the eyes of human beings. As they looked, the humans would become the gods and goddesses in charge, the tour guides of this reality, so to speak. At one time, humans on Earth held very honorable and highly evolved positions. You had glorious, vibrant forms emanating energy and light. 
Just as chefs have specialties in food preparation, humans had specialized ways of experiencing the living library and accessing information. Those who desired knowledge came to experience and discover the Library of Earth. They merged with humans who served as library cards into Earth and all Her Majesty. Becoming one with other energies and allowing them to look out of your eyes in order to experience more was a divine purpose. Humans made themselves available for this process. There is glorious information that is desperately needed in existence and it is stored here on Earth. As the reorganization of light takes place on Earth, there will be a mass merging of beings who are very benevolent, very uplifting, and very loving. They will come through and operate out of your bodies. You will still maintain your own integrity and your own identity. However, they will blend with you as we blend with our vehicle. They will be able to access the codes and master numbers that you house inside your bodies. The self is a composition of many different life forms, all making up a central soul. As Earth is being catapulted into a new direction, the occupants may perish because they do not meet the new speed at which Earth will vibrate. Or... They will begin the changes that will prepare them for the ability to blink on and off into the various personalities that make up the collection of the soul. You are forerunners in this, and you are meeting the portions of yourselves that are the most imperative for you to understand. There are many of these selves to meet. You are game masters yourselves those who orchestrated the re-establishing of Earth's freedom and the seeding of civilizations. These civilizations became alive and activated, and now you are living in one of the most exciting places and times of existence. There are many who support you and wish to merge with you, operate through you, and give you a hand with the job in front of you. You do not have to read a lot of text and balance a lot of computer sheets to carry this job out. All you need is to trust yourselves and design your reality according to your own wits by intending what you, as humans, want to accomplish. Whatever you intend to make as your signature, your mark on this world, it shall be. So dream big. The conjunctions of Uranus and Neptune in 1993 as a galactic tidal wave of light sent a bolt of electric current onto your planet and activated the potential for the third helix in humans. It triggered the light encoded filaments to draw together and bundle that third helix. This bridged the electrical current inside your bodies that will access the self you know to the multidimensional self. What does it mean to be a library card? It means that you are on your first step towards certification, towards understanding, bonding, blending, and merging with other energies and allowing them to emerge through you into the living library. When you reach certain states of consciousness, you emit an electromagnetic pulse, like a radio program that others can tune into. You then become very valuable because you can be merged with and others can access the codes. The codes contain formulas for replicating life. Many safeguards were designed so that the most important data stored in humans exists and is accessed only through a certain state of consciousness. Without that, the formulas do not even present themselves into being. The formulas exist through a preservation of a high level of consciousness within humans. If quality of life and existence is tampered with, humans are not able to produce the formulas. We are asking all of you to feel the energy of these beings who wish to merge with you. Ask them to give you a sign. Say, my work is for my own upliftment and that of the planet. If you are in alignment with this, welcome. If you are not, don't even come around. I am not available for that kind of nonsense. You need to state this. Be more in charge. 
There are many things that are necessary to prepare your body to accommodate awareness of multidimensional energy. Yoga, stretching, breathing, and algae and herbs to supplement your body create room for energy to operate. A body is needed that accommodates the vibration of multidimensional intelligence. So perhaps some of your work involves this preparation. Your natural state of being and what you are evolving toward is a multidimensional character who will be able to make peace on this planet and take that peace into other worlds as well. Remember, peace involves a decision that is a standard chosen for your life. Someday there will be many parallel memories to integrate and ideas that suddenly emerge. You will realize that there are layers and layers of yourself experiencing while a portion of you is so certain nothing is going on. These layers of reality are beginning to split and fragment and you are moving into new aspects of your abilities and expression. Now, the trick is to catch these things, to spend more time pursuing what you have been inspired to discover over the years. This memory that is being stirred up inside of you can create bodily reactions because it dwells in the cells of your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies, and it needs to be understood. You are growing into something new, and you are building the framework. We encourage you to have your body adjusted through whatever modality of experience suits your fancy. You could use shiatsu, massage, rolfing, rebirthing, or some method through which you are able to access all of your bodies, mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional. Use these methods to move energy beyond any place it may have become stuck. We recommend that you drink great amounts of water Spend time breathing and oxygenating, do toning, and practice allowing unlabeled sound to express itself through your body. Keep your body active and alive. Spend time communicating, meditating with peace, and listening to whatever is speaking to you from the inside. Weave your discoveries into the structure of your life and intend along the way what it is that you want. Clarity is the name of the game here. If you make yourself available without clarity, it is very easy to attract energies that will not accommodate your vibration. This does not mean that those energies are bad. It simply means that they may resonate out of sync with your vibrational intent, which may, of course, be unclear to you. When you are not firm in the stance of yourself, confusion occurs because the energies are not integrating. Your emotions create the quality of your experience as the thought forms hanging out with you. Acting happy and perfect all the time is not the solution. Allow yourself to move through emotional experiences and learn from them. Dark moods and energies that you hold onto become habits or patterns that can create extreme difficulties. You can become what we call a cosmic hooker an open doorway to any and all unqualified energies. Knowing that the prime creator is in all things, this indeed can create a dilemma. In the realm of multidimensionality and merging, animals are adepts. Animals move through dimensions. Have you ever seen an animal or a bird one minute and then the next second it is gone? Animals are very concerned with the quality of life much more so than you are. When the quality of life is in question, the animals automatically migrate towards a more sustaining reality. They remove themselves into other domains of existence where they are programmed to survive. Insects and frogs, for example, open dimensional avenues with their sounds. Others may travel on sound. Everything dreams, journeying into many realities. You can best relate to the concept of dreaming knowing that when you sleep, you go into another world that does exist. Everything exists because it is connected, whether memory is open or not. 
Beetles, earthworms, and frogs know they go from one reality to another. They go into other worlds, yet they are right here in this world. Many very intelligent forms of life can manifest themselves by merging with the animal and plant kingdoms. In this way, they can come peek into your reality. Now, these many intelligent forms of life want to merge with you, the library cards. The way they can access the library through you as humans is quite different from the way they can access the library by coming in as squirrels. You are complex. You have a tremendous amount of knowledge inside of you. And as you prepare yourselves to merge with other forms of sentient existence, you will be able to bring peace to your planet. You will be able to bring a magnificent new upliftment, a new way of being, a new prayer. It will seem as if it is coming out of you, and yet you will know that it is more than you. Understand that there is a great intelligence in all life forms, and the experience of all life is waiting for you. Open your emotional selves and employ the vital force of love as the key to your own spiritual evolution. The living library's doorway in your body is your genitals, and if you learn how to use this doorway, it serves as an opening into the records of time. Sexuality aligns your body into a state of healing and opens gateways to the stars. Sexuality in a bonded, loving relationship can be profound and take you into other worlds, revitalize your body, and remind your body of its most idealized patterns. Using sexual expression to regenerate yourself rather than degenerate yourself is the ideal you will pursue. Dealing with sexuality involves dealing with hormones. Sex excites the very core of your cells and the light encoded filaments become entwined with one another. In a magnet, the energies all line up and face the same way. When you become sexual and do the dance that starts in your hormones, your whole body lines up in one direction. When you and another individual are lined up, you are like the north and south poles. Your body turns into a magnet. When you and another individual achieve a heightened state of electromagnetic force, you pull on one another and create a balance between each other. When you get really good at this, you will not even have to touch each other. You can create this web of love between you, and it is through this force field that your inner bodies arise and go into other worlds. We think sexuality is one of the most exciting gifts you have been given. And we want to guide you further along this journey so that you can have a better time on Earth. Love yourself and love Earth because they are one and the same. And that means every part of your body. You need to talk about sex, make a commitment to accept every area of your body, and to draw a partner to yourself who will honor every area of your body. Know that your partner will be wanting and willing to pioneer this glorious part of your God-Goddess force. You inherit the blueprint of every person with whom you have sex. So you have not only your own stuff to deal with, but theirs as well. When your body comes together with another's, your chakras are stirred and your kundalini is moved. If your kundalini is only moved into your lower two chakras, and it is not a full body infusion, you can have hooks into the other person's auric field and they can have hooks into yours. This is why it is important to be very selective about who you are going to have sex with. Make sure, if you are going to go for it, that you have some kind of bond and commitment and that you plan on working things out. Because in this day of accelerated time and sped up energy, you can take on everything from someone else. Sex is wonderful. It is absolutely one of the most glorious gifts that you have as a human being to discover your identity. However, you must learn how to use it. No one has educated you on the ramifications of the energy link that comes from having sex with people. You may want to do a number of ceremonies or rituals with the intention of releasing people's energy from your field. 
Smudging is a very good ritual to clear your energy field. Churches all use it. Many institutions use incense or smoke of some kind to clear energy. Smoke is multidimensional. When you smudge, it is an indication you are taking a step to cleanse, clear, and release the energy so that there are no attachments. You may want to smudge your body and smudge your home. If you are a man, when you have sex, you can learn to retain the sperm and not ejaculate. There are certain techniques to do this. Pressing on the perineum, the small area between the anus and the scrotum, holds the life force inside the body and the orgasm changes. Humans have been tricked into having genital orgasms, which are localized experiences rather than full body cosmic experiences. If you think about how many bodies you are, you will realize that you can experience orgasm in all of these bodies. So as you reconsider and redefine how you are pleasured, you begin to experience different ways of receiving pleasure and you move out of the locality of the genital area. There is also tremendous excitement that can come from looking into each other's eyes, exchanging the strands of DNA. This is the heart connection into the eyes of the soul, the heart of the soul. Of course you can close your eyes. However, a tremendous amount of eye contact changes the experience. You may also wish to work with your chakras touching especially each other's heart chakras. Put your hand on the heart chakra of your partner and keep your hearts open. Perhaps you can change your focus during intercourse to not reach climax immediately. Have fun and build to the point just before climax, then hold that frequency. Subside to a point and build it again and again. Take some time with it. When you honor the process, spending hours doing so, because this creates a deep intimacy and the experience will last you so much longer. The rejuvenation or regeneration of the life force occurs when there are hours and hours of intimacy with your eyes open and you learning to get your body to do what you want it to do. An orgasm is not a local event. There are people who can have their ears tickled and have orgasms. There are people who can have their wrists tickled and have orgasms. You can have orgasms when you dream. You can have orgasms when you are out of your body. The orgasm is misunderstood. You think it is a local event of the genital area. It is not. It is a cosmic event that has been interpreted to be localized so that you would miss the point. It is an ongoing pulsation of godhood and goddesshood, of pleasure and of connecting to the pulse of existence. So it can occur anywhere. If you were really tuned in to your sexuality, taking a bite of delicious food could send an orgasm through you if you were that free. It is the height of appreciating the divinity in all things. There is nothing wrong with masturbation. It is a fine practice if you learn to honor your body and the rightness of stimulating certain feelings within your body. Masturbate without projection, without shame, and without dragging varieties of unknowns into your body through thought. It is tricky, like everything. It is a fine art form, but it is not to be practiced solely as a form of release. If you are using masturbation to release tension, then you need to reconsider. If you have never masturbated, then how can you expect to have sex with someone else and expect them to know your body when you don't know it yourself? Sexuality will take on a whole different value and become one of the most important forces discussed as earth changes become more pronounced. As your society disintegrates, you will want to reevaluate everything. You will want to be close, to be committed, and to have a partner you can count on. As you become aware of life extension and understand about everything speeding up, you will eventually experience great movements of rejuvenation. The partners that you choose will be partners you know and have known for tens of thousands of years. 
If you are female, you can help your male partner open up by accepting yourself and your own body and by creating for yourself a standard about the kind of man you are available for. You will magnetize this kind of man because he will be willing to learn and change. The male vibrations, in general, are very confused at this time, not knowing for certain what their identity is. They are going to find out that they need to draw to themselves those who will integrate them into these changes. The more you can be stabilized in your love for your body and in your willingness to know what you want and what your intentions are, the easier it will be for men. One of the big taboos in your society has been oral sex. We've said that woman's substance of power is blood, while the substance of power for men is sperm. Sperm carries a tremendous amount of data, while blood can be likened to an elixir of healing, a source of life. Both offer revitalization and rejuvenation. When you share these substances while in a bonded, loving relationship, it is the ultimate in sharing your secret power. It is the ultimate in blending in your identities so that you can remember who you are and why, in this lifetime, you have come together. When you ingest these substances, you create a very deep bonding. It is like drinking or infusing the secrets and the sum total of the individuals from whom they came. Again, we will state here that without the ingredient of love, you will never reach this exalted state of achievement. We suggest that couples who have sex have an intention around their sexual activity. This does not take the spontaneity out of it. It does not mean that you have to get organized and structured and make appointments and have all of this processing before you come together. As you develop intimacy, sexual activity does not take place only when your hormones are zinging. Sexual expression takes place continuously. As you walk into a market, you can carry on a conversation about your sexuality. You don't have to lock that experience into the bedroom or when you are having a drink or within certain little boxes of performance. You are going to be infused with this energy. It is part of what will train you about your divinity. It is essential. You have many things to look forward to in the sexual arena. Stay open, evaluate your present beliefs around sexuality and explore your boundaries. Sexuality is your birthright and your heritage as humans. It is your gift from the gods. Time is a construct. On Earth, you have been under the assumption that the present springs from the past. We suggest that the present springs from the future as well. Time has many doorways through it, and the past and future both have their own validity and importance. This is all part of the ever-expanding now. The past, in its now, continues to influence its ongoing now. These ongoing nows continue to grow and mature, the same as their future counterparts. The assignment you are on involves changing your past as you spring from the future in order to create a different present. You are ruled by cycles and rhythms. A main influence that designs the pulse of life is the moon. Through the moon cycles and by the revolving of Earth on her axis and Earth's rotation around the sun, you make and define time. The moon, of course, in orbit around the Earth, acts as Earth's celestial companion on the cyclical journeys. Until the advent of electricity, these were the rhythms through which life was lived and defined for thousands of years. People could watch time pass. Day turned into night, and night turned into day. Time had distinctions. People could watch the seasons pass, and time was based on something that could be verified. With electricity came the breaking of these rhythms, where there could be light past dark. People began to use time differently, for functioning with light while it was dark heralded a radically different approach to the 24-hour day because electric light provided 
more moments to expand into. When people first worked around computers, their concepts of time completely changed and they could only handle so much of a distortion. Now that people are trained in computers, their altered time perception is passed on through the generations and time is more sped up. However, the computer is a third dimensional manifestation mirroring the collapse and distortion of time and people fed the results of this into the mass psyche. This permits people like you to weave things together and perceive reality from a significant psychic viewpoint, a different point in time. The splitting of the second and the infusion of the computer heralded the technological boom of this century, completely changing everything and speeding your consciousness toward untold probabilities. The second and the moment continuously hold more events. Time has a variable now. It cannot be measured and clocked any longer. You can change, bend, and move time. As time collapses, new concepts, ideas, inventions, and alternatives are bombarding the mass psyche of the planet every few moments. Probabilities of the moment are awakening and expanding through your experience of self-realization. Because you have mastered an affinity to connect with intelligence outside the planet, collectively, the planet is beginning to qualify for a higher rate of intelligence and responsibility. Though it may appear your world is reeking with corruption, please be aware that both polarities are going on at the same time. Those who carry light are becoming very empowered and in a few years, you will be amazed at the force of these people, for they are you. One belief you have in common is your belief in a new version of reality in which people express their freedom with respect, harmony, and cooperation, and in which Earth and each form of life, animal, plant, mineral, and human, is valued. The Maya called themselves day keepers. We call them keepers of time. They are associated, of course, with the Pleiades system. They are masters at going into and out of time events. They are also masters at creating time locks. They cordon things off so that events can be directly in front of you and because of the time locks, you do not see them. Time locks keep your consciousness from perceiving simultaneous time. The keepers of time that orchestrate events are like balls of light with rays that travel into many different realities and directions. The Mayan keepers of time were able to anchor on Earth the data that would make sense to future generations because they were multidimensional. They could travel backward, forward, and sideways in time, and their civilization was based upon time travel. They left many clues to this story buried throughout the land of Mexico. Their now became more meaningful because it was their purpose to grow a now that would benefit nows outside of their now. The Maya meant to create the paradigm, the description of what is going to occur, the cycles that your earth goes through, and the cycles of time that are based on cosmic doorways. Earth's cycles with the sun, moon, and planets within your solar system have a significant effect on your physical electromagnetic body. The Maya understood that the Earth is involved in a larger system of rotation than just the solar system. That system of rotation was based on different numerical divisions. The Maya created and defined time in your system based upon their knowing that you were part of much larger cycles. The purpose of the Maya was to come onto the planet to establish a paradigm for the future. Different civilizations hold open portals of energy through collective consciousness. Energies that support or sustain other types of realities can, in limited number, be pulled onto the planet. However, a civilization must be prepared and trained to anchor this pillar of light. When there is light, there is information. The Mayan calendar precisely indicates the cycles of the heavens and the hells. 
the Maya knew their day of departure, and they prepared for that closure. From their point of view, they were transported into another physical dimension. In actuality, the Maya still very much exist. They flourish. Your keys of consciousness are moving through the time locks that the Maya are lifting for you. Because they are the keepers of time, the Maya are opening many time locks all over the planet. All time is simultaneous. A planet has layers of energy grids around it that allow it to be experienced from its various time frames. In order to enter a planetary body, you must discover the portals or opening that take you into the realities of the planet where sentient life exists. You can land on a world, and it can look completely empty to you if you don't go through a portal. By going through a portal, you access all the different realities and time frames and corridors that run off this portal. So someone can come back to an Earth that existed 200 or 500 years ago. These realities exist. Layer upon layer of gridworks surround worlds. As these gridworks are shifted and moved, they create different realities and different energies. When you move or shift the grids and pass through a portal, you are able to enter worlds of past, present, and future simultaneously. There are many portals on Earth. There is one in the Mexico Central America area. There is one in the Sinai. And there is one over Tibet. These are three major portals through which energies come and depart the planet. Ancient crystal skulls are often discovered or kept in portal areas. When people maintain guardianship and ownership of a portal, they also have the ability to access the corridors of time. Those in Tibet could look into the future and see that they were to be invaded, so they made preparations for the times that were coming. They could see what their very seeds, the sperm of the Tibetan monks, would be used for. They could also see why their artifacts had to be hidden and that they would have to go into exile. Timelines, the fabric of time, and the tubes that run on this fabric of time are all hooked into primary events. Without a primary event, you cannot hook into a timeline. In other words, the secondary and tertiary webs need to be hooked into a primary event so that other timelines can use it as an anchor. The splitting of the atom was a primary event. So was the splitting of the second. Harmonic convergence was a primary event. Primary events can be public or private events, and are events through which the course of history is affected drastically. So, in order to anchor a new timeline onto the planet, there has to be a mass event taking place. A primary event is an occurrence that is registered within the prime webwork in the corridors of time as a pivotal juncture around which all of reality transits. It can be considered an event that is a turning point for the domain in which it transpires. Harmonic convergence was an orchestrated event impulsed from the future. It was sent from the future into the past and then reorganized into the present to create a hole through which the secondary and tertiary nets could be built and find a link onto the planet. What was the link? If these webs needed a primary event to link onto, what was it in the primary event that gave them the hold? It was the consciousness of the people. The libraries are on a version of the primary web that is closed down and inactivated. The libraries are guarded. It is not easy to get into a library these days, especially from the future. So the underlying time corridors are being constructed. Many, in order to own certain territories or to have greater influence over them, route specific timelines together. They have as many timelines link into each other as possible, or they avoid as many as they can, depending upon what the purpose is. When the secondary and tertiary events are established and built, 
it means that there will be a major opening in the corridor of time. This opening will allow many to come through the so-called officially approved channels. They will find an underground movement and doorways that simultaneously open in many other directions. The Maya, those master tricksters of time, have left you a number of clues with which to play this game. The Mayan calendar is well worth considering as it marks a time of ending and a closure at the winter solstice in December 2012. When that last stretch of time is completed, there will be a dimensional shift upon this planet. Those who are able to accommodate the dimensional shift now are already moving in and out of the fourth and even the fifth dimension. During the next 20 years, the new frequency will become so predominant on the planet that it will catapult one version of your world into a new cycle and another version into a complete ending and destruction. Eventually, you will perceive a very different set of memories because you will change the past of your universe. This is how things are. We have told you that you come from your future and that we came back to change the past. We are very clever. We are changing the history of the entire universe by making a parallel universe. This is what parallel universes are. Plans that shift the mechanisms of time from one point by changing the memory and changing the event. You can do the same thing in your own personal life. You can change your past as well. Be flexible as you learn to play the game. Before you came into this reality, you applied for a slice of time, the moment you were born. At the precise time of your birth, the stars, planets, moon, and sun were in a specific configuration. When you emerged from your mother's womb, the energy from the stars and planets imprinted your flesh, no matter where you were, because the energy was touching Earth at that time as well. Within that moment were written certain probabilities, specific opportunities, and distinct challenges. The language of the stars explains your world in a way that is helpful for you to understand the bigger picture. Everything is in geometric relationship to everything else, creating energetic patterns. You yourself selected a moment and a lineage, a bloodline that you were born to, to give you the opportunities that you assessed would be ideal for you to experience in this lifetime. You determined these experiences according to what you needed to learn based on what you had created, will create, and are creating simultaneously in other places. In 1993, you experienced what we refer to as the galactic tidal wave of light, which translated through a planetary lineup that created a pathway of energies. The galactic tidal wave of light can be understood through the two planets Uranus and Neptune, which came into conjunction on three separate occasions, in February, in August, and in October 1993, aligning and energizing the sign of Capricorn at 18 to 19 degrees. Each planet has its own identity, its domain of influence. Each planet is a sentient being an intelligent force of its own. As these two forms of intelligence came together in the sky, they transmitted a combined beam onto Earth, affecting those portions of Earth influenced by Capricorn. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, which represents form, structure, authority, limitations, and time. Among other things, Saturn has to do with rocks, stones, and crystals. Because these two planets joined in Capricorn, they mystified, electrified, energized, and changed the stone of Earth herself. On a planetary scale, the energy of this conjunction is leading you towards an opening of the feeling center, offering a solution to the building chaos. This flood of cyclic energy is responsible for the rapid mutation that will take place within the human species. You, as you exist here in this very moment, are changing or mutating through this energy. 
and your cells are becoming something different than they were. An alteration on a cellular level will catapult you into a metamorphosis in the spiritual dimensions. The earth changes that occur as a result will finalize the shift in consciousness that is needed to restore sanity, purpose of living, and meaningful existence to dimensions that are to be home here on earth. The moon is a satellite that was constructed. It was built and anchored outside Earth's atmosphere as a mediating and monitoring device, a supercomputer, or eye in the sky. It affects all life forms on this planet beyond what you can currently grasp. In your history, there are references to two moons around Earth. You don't hear of this often, but there are those who know. At this time, the moon is quite controlled. Some people are gravely affected by mania and craziness from the moon. Extraterrestrials and others have many bases on the moon, and those from Earth have little influence when it comes down to it. It is the extraterrestrials who really operate it all. Your technology, though rapidly advancing, cannot begin to compare with the biotechnology of sentient space travelers. You are newcomers to the game, and you miss a vital key where your senses and the essence of your physical world structure reality in a particular way. You constantly translate data, and like interpreting a dream, condense the experience into physical boundaries where you find you can explain less and less. All is thought in mental architecture with a construction crew in many realities. The sun is the governor of your solar system and is the seat of intelligence that rules this particular locale you occupy. The sun reaches into your domain and reads the vibrations as it touches your skin. It is intimately connected with every aspect of life as you know it. It is a force of intelligence that fuels your very existence and creates the environment under which you can evolve. The sun is very interested in your evolution, for as you evolve, you feed everything that you do back to the sun as it touches you. The sun and the moon are the luminaries within your system by which you are most profoundly influenced and affected. The sun generates its own light. The sun, in turn, illuminates the moon. The moon is a subsatellite of the sun, orbiting as a computer around Earth, built and maintained by many generations of gods. Heavenly bodies are constructed in the shapes of asteroids moons and planets, and it is through these luminaries that rays of intelligence, radio waves, and gamma rays are transmitted from star to sun and sent to earth. It is through these rays that your actions are also read and taken back into the sun, the moon, and the beaming system, in this case, the Pleiades. When you are able to move to another location, and view the solar system and sky from a different point of reference, you will see that Earth and the stars and everything shift quite dramatically. One of the systems with which you rotate is the system of the Pleiades, whose central sun is called Alcyon. Your solar system is located on the fringe of the galactic spiral. The sun is the governor, the ruler of your particular system as it appears to you. It is the sensitive spot of your particular arena of space. The sun reads its creations and in turn feeds the creations what they need. So when you carry love of yourselves and earth, the solar rays completely understand the consciousness you carry. When you carry fear of earth, the solar rays understand and they nudge you into those experiences. As the rays from the sun change, activated by the consciousness of the inhabitants of Earth, and as the sun releases solar bursts, the polar regions of Earth are affected. The flares sent forth are like atomic explosions or jolts of electricity that go millions of miles deep into space. Earth's poles, which are magnets, catch this energy. They grab energy 
that comes from space to the planet. Because of the magnetic force, they arc it either around the equator or inward to the core of Earth. Each pole grabs the solar energy, drives it in, and creates a huge cylinder of vibrational energy. As that vibrational energy jolts and juggles to fit, it has to align with the energy grid of the Earth that is connected from the poles. This grid work is decreed by you, and to some extent, all energies merging or emerging through your version of Earth conform to this grid of beliefs. Intelligence designs itself as light. It is the intelligence of your sun that holds your solar system in its energetic field. At this time, effects are coming to you from beyond your sun. It is almost as if the effects of your sun have been unable to penetrate what has happened here on Earth. So other suns are coming to be assistants to your sun. Your sun makes the solar flares that draw the cosmic rays, grounding them into the solar system. Think of the sun as a gigantic magnet. Its solar flares send out tentacles to reach and grab for the cosmic rays. The cosmic rays are solar flares from a central sun at a distant place in your galaxy. We say the sun is grand. Studies have shown that when sunscreen was introduced, the rate of skin cancer began to rise. There is nothing wrong with the sun. In fact, the removal of the ozone layer allows you to have even greater receptivity to the rays of the sun. There are those who say, don't look at the sun, it is bad, it will burn out your eyes. We say you will have a change in your eye structure. There will be a mutation within the optic nerve that will allow a new type of vision and unlock what has been holding you to 3D. Trust that no one made a mistake when they put the sun in the sky. In the beginning, there was sound. Sound began the whole thing, and in sound resides tremendous power. It opens doorways to other realities, for with the production of sound, an energy can move from one system to another. When you utilize sound, it is quite easy to bypass the logical mind, shifting the channel by intending and being clear. Allow sounds to come through your body, not just by singing specific notes, rather by allowing combinations of sound to play your bodies as if they are instruments. These sounds go beyond the logical mind. Sometimes you may fight or struggle because you have intellectualized a concept yet cannot anchor it in its entirety onto your emotional experience. By toning, your intelligent intent is transmitted on sound, on carrier waves. Many forms of intelligence can communicate to the cells of your beings, bypassing the resistance of your logical minds and going directly through your bodies to your higher minds. We suggest that you hold weekly group tonings. Let this become part of your rituals and entertainment and part of the process of joining together. Toning is very beneficial to release pent-up energy. You feel light and uplifted afterward. It lines you up and gets your bodies in balance. Tones themselves correspond with and affect specific areas of the body. Some sounds affect your eyesight or taste, buds or hearing. They affect all of the various senses and the organs as well. The ancients understood that a simple sound could reorganize the body's structure. The body automatically makes the most appropriate sounds that you need in a given moment. Trust. There are sounds that can stimulate deterioration or regeneration of organs in the body. Sounds that are harmonious activate the body and create healing. Healing can come through intention. However, there are certain sound frequencies that remind the liver to organize into its native geometric blueprint. Geometry is the form of intelligence that takes shape after sound moves away from prime creator. Your bodies are filled with geometry, for everything is made up of a geometric essence. 
Combinations of sounds as notes and chords will be played for enhancement of the liver, thyroid, and heart, and for regeneration. The entire body will be mapped and tuned much like a piano. You see the body functions on a blueprint, and it absorbs the sounds. It has an idealized blueprint which it automatically grows toward. You yourself do not have to know how your body grows from the infant stage to the adult stage. Within the blueprint of being, part of the purpose is to grow and maintain a healthy body. The blueprint of the body is changing, altering the purpose of the body. There will be reversals in health and numerous regenerative experiences as sound is utilized to remind the body to move in an ever uplifting fashion. A great reversal is at hand concerning your beliefs about the degeneration of the body. Most people have not discovered that sharing sound during sexual activity is a deep key. When you tone together, you feel the spinning and opening of the chakras. During sex, sharing sound with each other beyond the usual moans can lead to a greater distribution of sexual energy. Sound moves energy beyond the genitals, dispersing it throughout the cells of the body and triggering memory that unites you with more of who you are. Remember, the totality of your being contains both the shadow and the light. Please, do not be distressed with the shadow. It adds beauty and understanding to the light. Move out of judgment, yet stay in comfort. The time will come when the children will gather and using their unique telepathy, make silent sound. They will use their minds to create symphonies on other dimensions of existence. They will use sound internally and externally to create harmonics as light shields all over the planet. The children will gather in the hundreds and then the thousands, and they will be led into this collective image-making process. It will be a ritual set into motion as a very sacred event. While the children are doing this type of silent sounding, they will anchor and establish huge geometric identities that will eventually protect and govern Earth and psychic forces of thought. These geometric identities will be perhaps the higher selves of what you call the reptiles, the higher selves of many of the extraterrestrials or God forms that appear to be physical and etheric. Beyond them is geometry and beyond that, sound. Sound is the governor of existence. The game masters employ sound, light, and geometry as basic tools for operation, and they wonder what you will do as you discover the tools of truth. Many will awaken to the use of sound. There will be major discoveries and energy impacts using sound. If 100,000 individuals are impulsed to harmonize and allow themselves to be played harmoniously as instruments of consciousness, imagine. Everything comes from sound. Sound is the primal energy that is used to create. Sound came first. emphasize your value as well as that of Earth. She is your mother, she feels you, and she knows your name. In her quest for understanding, she has allowed a grave misuse of energy, and has even allowed herself to lose her true identity by being raped and abused by humankind. In order for Earth to make the necessary leap that will affect all of this universe, a cleansing and a healing, an initiation must take place. Earth is going to go through tumultuous changes. After studying the records of Earth and of many worlds, we see this probability as being inevitable because of the extensive polarity on your planet. Rest assured that the more you pollute and destroy Earth, the more energy will go into shifting and shaking to clean things up. 
humans who do not operate with love of self and love of the planet will be departing in vast numbers very quickly after exposure to the rays entering Earth. This is part of the electromagnetic change of the civilization. In death, the human vehicle moves consciousness into another realm. The healing crisis has just begun. The fever is building. Between the years 1994 and 1999, you will move into peak chaos. During that time, there will be a great movement to create fear and confusion on the planet. Concurrently, there will be a great merging of the multidimensional self because energy fields from space will have been opened to allow sources of intelligence to travel quite easily along these pathways. They will travel through to you and emerge in your domain. There will be no continent untouched and no people unmoved by what takes place. There will be few of you who will not have to migrate for all of you basically will relocate yourselves at some point. For some of you, this is unheard of. Yet, by relocating yourselves, there will be a major shift in consciousness. Using a pendulum and dowsing are ways that you can check, verify, and discover your location. There are individuals who are delineating quite clearly through prophecy where the safer areas are going to be. There are a number of ways you can do this yourselves. Your lives will be, out of necessity, simplified. The more you can prepare for this simplification, the easier it will be on you. Unclutter your lives by letting go of the unnecessary things that would drag you down with responsibilities, the things you don't need. Lighten up. Sit on the ground. Feel Earth. Communicate with Earth and trust Earth. Trust that when Earth moves, you will move in sync. Trust that Earth will love you, warn you, and inform you in some way. Trust that the insects will speak to you, along with the cats, the dogs, and the birds. If you have this communication and deep love and appreciation for the energy of Earth's vibration, Earth will work with you. Remember, she knows you. No matter where you are, she knows your feelings and intentions and responds accordingly. Earth changes are equated with death, yes? On your planet, you know next to nothing about death. There is a tremendous opportunity in all of these shifts to learn about death. It appears to some of you that as people leave or die, there is a mishap taking place. It appears there is a failure and that something was done wrong. We see the opposite. We see people leaving the planet with a new point of view. They are so gifted because many of you have your hearts open and are transmitting unity of purpose, allowing others to know and realize what they came for. Not everyone came here to see a new earth. Can you realize that some people came to this planet to die in peace without torture and pain and to die with the consciousness of liberation? When you are afraid of death or pain, and you have an opportunity to assist someone pass over, your heart may want to close down. You may think, I can't do this. I can't look at death. It's too frightening. Keep your heart open. Let the goddess do it. And you will find that there is a ripeness and a timeliness in every person's exit. Yes, events are being orchestrated. However, they cannot be orchestrated without the consciousness to match them. As you are clearing the last dregs of fear and misunderstanding, many of you will be called upon to work with the dead and help release them. When this happens on a large scale, you will find that those who have passed over will periodically return. When you become a death walker, you are able to make the death experience with another and walk back from it to go to the other side and come back. You find that there are many different energies accompanying each person's journey. 
Ask for a knowledgeable, uplifted, wise, and benevolent being to blend with you and help you understand the best way to create the highest opportunity for the death. Ask to have the ability to walk through the death experience and see people over to the other side as they once did in ancient Egypt. Take the departed on a boat and journey to the other side, then come back and tell everyone where they went. For some of you, this is essential to master in this decade on your earth plane. When people move from one dimension to another, the process can be greatly facilitated through the use of sound. You may want to experiment with different kinds of sound. You may want to tone, make sound through instruments, or sing. You will discover what is most appropriate. Ask for guidance and impulses. You need to make an agreement to trust your impulses. They are what will save your bodies. When you get an impulse that says leave, something is telling you to move, something is telling you to go, so do it. Learn to recognize your impulses and to respond to them. The Death Walker's job is to assist people into a place of forgiveness allowing the death release to occur without any attachments to blame, judgments, or victimhood. There is an art to this because often, in the final moments, people open to forgiveness. As dying people get close to their maker, time collapses. Moments elongate into poignant lessons of life, and a great opportunity is at hand. The greatest act of forgiveness is ultimately to yourself because you passed all judgments and made forgiveness necessary. You can assist the dying to find peace in their lives, to exit in serenity and love with smiles on their faces. Help them by asking them to look for friends or relatives or others they would recognize to beckon them onward. This is a pivotal key in assisting and death walking. There is healing in death because there is life on the other side of death. As you send your energy to these individuals in transition, transmit it also to Earth. Support Earth in her process and let her know that you want to be here to participate in the transformation. It is a true form of allowing when you surrender to the process and allow Earth to do what is necessary. As Earth continues her dance of purification and the shaking and moving intensifies, you will be impulsed to cluster together to enhance existing communities or form new communities. Each community will grow and flourish based on its members' abilities to feel and to create thought forms together. Each community will need to energize a cooperative codicil so that everyone can come together to contribute food, shelter, music, movement, and sound. This system of communities will go back to the old way of living in which you need each other. It will reestablish the ancient blueprint of relationships by which you experience interconnected living. You will feel relief when you belong to a community and live closer to the land, breathe fresh air, and feel alive. There will be a new vitality in food, there will be deeper laughter and relationships and a greater value to every moment of life. Eventually, you will come to the conclusion that life is to be played and that only in playing life can you succeed in work. If you do not play properly, you cannot have successful work. The work needs always to benefit the community. Many healings will take place. Communities will be inspired to build and a renaissance of the temple culture will occur. All over this land sites will be marked and sacred buildings of beauty brought forth. Earth changes will open many secrets from deep in Earth herself. The pyramids that dot this land and are covered over will be uncovered and many cracks and crevices will reveal ancient sites long buried. You will pool resources and share your ideas about food, education, barter, business, leisure time and places of meditation. Prioritize and agree that a strong community comes first, knowing that each person is a valuable asset to the whole community. 
As you do these things, you establish a field of ideas or a field of thought. You will create huge thought forms over the community. Those who have a predilection for reading thought forms will be able to view your community and know by reading the energy in the thought forms who you are and what you are all about. Your thought forms will be a new sort of etheric telegraph. The rights of birth are going to change. The value of birth and what women do to bring children into this world will come into the highest honor. A man will be honored to stand next to a mother and child and say, It is my child, reclaiming the pride and responsibility that goes with fathering a child. Women will no longer experience shame with childbirth. Why do so many women not have fathers for their children? Because they are ashamed of the process and not connected to the honor of what they are doing. There will come a time when a man will truly seek the favor of a woman. He will want to be in her vibration, to bond more than anything else, to be a part of the miracle of life, and to deliver children. It will be completely changed. Your current era will be looked upon as a most barbaric time, when the darkest of darkness was at hand, and when women themselves did not even know that they were playing out the patriarchal game of birth. Your communities will be oriented toward children, toward what you can do for children to create a safe, loving, nurturing environment. You will learn from the children as they become your teachers. They will instruct you and share with you what they know and what is going on from their perspective. There will be a series of children born this decade whom we call the family of love. They will teach you about the energy of the goddess and about love as a force of creation. They will carry the epitome of creative energy. They will be born to those who know how to honor their sexuality. When a couple unites in the highest vibration of spiritual energy, with complete chakra opening and intention to invite an energy to life, this allows the family of love individuals to be born. These children will help create telepathic link-ups with their potential parents so choices can be made. We wish to communicate to each of you that you do have a choice. Will you exercise that choice? Or will you slip into disempowerment and think that you have no effect on what your body can do? This teaching is crucial to the days that are coming. Each of you, as a female or a male embodying the goddess or god energy in all phases, needs to embrace the idea that you have power over your body over the life-giving process, over the distribution of your kundalini, and that you decide when a child can enter through you. Not all of you will have these unique children. These children will seek out those with appropriate consciousness and bloodlines. They will be born in every village and community. They will help change the planetary vibration and will be born to parents who have a spiritual and psychic experience of sexuality. These children will be the embodiment of the vibration of love and will willingly decide to carry a mark of difference within them. They will be engineered in the very DNA of your bodies and your bloodstreams. We want to ask something of you. No matter where you are, no matter what is going on, no matter how severe events may seem to get, we want you to promise to always bring fun, love and laughter to every day of your life. Take time out to say, hey, listen, we're too freaked out over this. Let's laugh for a little bit. Let's stop and have tea. Let's energize the pleasure frequency. These are the most brilliant and uplifting of times. They are magnificent. It is just that you do not have the daily reminders of this. There are unique sound and light technologies that are energizing new opportunities for effortlessness and cooperation. There are many, many solutions that are being born. Understand that all you create and bring life to, you do with your mind. What you do with your mind and how you invest it is a key to your survival and the survival of planet Earth. We tell you stories from which you can evolve. You can choose whether to believe them or not. However, if you believe them, 
Be willing to let go of them and recognize when they no longer serve you. Our entire approach and purpose at this point in time is to confound you into clarity and create unsolvable contradictions within the patterns of thought that occupy the cells of your beings. By considering our words, you change. The days before you will be filled with a majestic splendor in the same way that your physical world once offered pristine beauty for you to explore. You are creating an opportunity to transcend third dimensional reality and to enter the corridors of time where worlds and realities have more variety and flexibility. Your task is to heal yourselves on a treasure hunt through the corridors of time. We have shared many keys with you and left as many unannounced. You must transform yourselves as the sum total of the force of existence poised in your moment of the ever-expanding now. Everything we have shared with you has been designed to take you deeper into yourselves. You have viewed the beliefs and ideas around which the self is structured by choice, by overt and covert influence on earth and from the heavens. What does it matter? Do not begrudge reality. You have created an opportunity now. You are poised at this ending to give thanks for what you know and what you have journeyed into. You have learned more of who you are in the story of Twelve. The idea of Twelve is deeply imprinted and embedded in your physical being. Twelve is a code that has been used by numerous sentient beings to enter your reality. You live in your world today according to certain mathematical agreements about reality. There are numerous mathematical bases for which numbers and interpretations can be pursued. Most of you simply agree on the one that is most commonly taught and used, and you believe that that is the only one. The idea of 12 coincides with the most commonly held mathematical base and point of view. The story of 12 is grander than that base, however, it fits well within it. Through this structure, you can be influenced and a way can be established so you can be guided to approach reality. You may ask yourself, what is the point of what I know? What good does it do me to know that I am a member of the family of light, that perhaps I am Pleiadian, that Earth is valuable? that I am valuable, and that if I walk Earth and search Earth, I can find her secrets in her unbounded majesty, her sacred sites, and her symphonies of silently speaking circles. What do I need to know about the Lizzies and the goddess and my body? And how is it that my body can have room within it to have others merge with me and peek out from my eyes? And if others merge with me, do they see the same world I do? Or is it through their merging with my being that other worlds emerge, and that I myself emerge into those other worlds? What is possession? What is merging and emerging in late 20th century Earth? What do my glands have to do with this in my body? And where does sex take me through all of this? Now, as you ponder these points, we in turn ask you, what great depths of surprise are you discovering as you learn to open your personal sacred sites to the secrets of your own loops of consciousness? What do you find when you meet brick walls and get to know the deepest mysteries of yourself? If you can learn to transform energy and move beyond judgment, you will come to an exalted place that takes you beyond the moment into a grander aspect of time a time that is structured in a different fashion from yours. Time for you is ruled by numbers. There again, you find the story of 12, encapsulated in time, defining who you are within a circle. So, as you complete the cycle of 12, consider a new way of viewing time. Realize that it is a structure through which other forms of existence use mathematical heritage as a language to express geometry. As you journey to this point that is the sum total of who you are, knowing all these things, 
you arrive at a moment when it is time to share your knowledge with your family, society, and culture. Many of you are poised in this moment. You have a duty to share what you know, not to preach or to sow seeds of fear or plant the field for another, but to vibrate in the wholeness that you are. You need to understand and encompass all the things that make up society, life, death, birth, children, and all society's members, young and old, not simply those you consider to be productive. Radical change will occur. Have compassion as you put the things you have learned to work. If the karma is squeezing you at this time, it is because you need to release yourselves from the prisons you have created by your own need to punish or feel shame or blame. You are all poised at the grand moment of letting go. Imagine that you are ambassadors of light, feeling space and vibrancy within yourselves, knowing that your thoughts have designed the energy that moves you. A new frontier and vista of the world awaits you if you visualize and imagine it. You must visualize that moment of bliss. It cannot exist without you. Do not be attached to what we have shared with you. Do not proclaim new Bibles of truth through our stories. We are here to entertain you, and as we have said, to create new images to give you a stepladder to what's out there. It's a gigantic universe. So do not limit yourself and force everything to fit into one recipe to bake a pie. There are many ways to look at life. The embodiment of 12 will give you a sum total of yourselves. Take it and realize that with the completion of 12, a whole new journey begins. It is this moment upon which you are now poised. Enjoy every moment as a moment of bliss. Keep yourselves in the ever-expanding opportunity that the goddesses and the gods and all the versions of yourselves are funneling your way. Accept the mantle of your own creation. We want to remind you that you are in two worlds. Even though you drive your cars, go to the bathroom, sleep, eat, and do all the things that all humans do, you do not dwell in the same world. You reside in a world of knowledge and you have gained access to the rules to bridge both of these worlds. We also want to remind you to energize the idea of a safe world. Much will happen, bringing change through tumultuous, shocking, and surprising events as things that have been prophesied begin to occur. It would be wise for all of you to seek the wisdom of the elders, the indigenous peoples in all cultures, and to listen to the teachings they share. They speak of these times, and their teachers have been our teachers. They understand as Earth speaks. We salute you for the courage to kindle the flame of faith as the spark of life in the core of your beings and to pioneer the frontier to blissful living where meaning and purpose thrive. See that flame grow and allow it to serve as the fuel for a safe and unique adventure into the grand arenas of experience. Dear Ambassadors of Light, be aware that even within the new concepts you grasp lies structure and limitation. However, each new daring you pursue takes you to a new vista where you scale the peaks of existence as divine teachings play themselves out today in your very own version of life. Ask yourself what chapter closes as you view this segment of your lives, this moment of the ever-expanding now. What have you pursued to steer you to this very moment in time in order to further experience life? Inspire yourselves to move further into the moment by letting go of old discoveries and trust to the core of your beings that a new cycle of learning awaits. Go forward, friends, and be uplifted. Learn in your own way to go into the past through the ever-expanding, spontaneous, synchronistic moment. A new cycle of existence awaits you. 
Use the tools of thought to guide yourselves on the new superhighway of consciousness. No technology will ever surpass the magnificence of your own biological spiritual beings. For many of you, these days may be filled with sadness as the letting go becomes more and more challenging. The keys of consciousness for living through these tumultuous times on earth have been given to you to the best of our ability and yours at this time. May you grow in wisdom and flourish. Your invisible friends and colleagues in the unknown. The Pleiadian.